This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you would like to help support this channel and get early access to every video, consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash cityscapes. Hi guys, Zootiescapes here and welcome back to Verville episode 57. In case you missed uh, last week's episode, we can see that right now on screen and it is uh, a guest build made by Akruas. I invented him uh, to build something in uh, Verville and I chose this little land plot for him at the edge of the city and he came up with the idea of this amazing looking stadium. It really was a great fit here and uh, I highly recommend you to check out last week's episode in case you missed it. And today we are moving back to the outskirts of the city, um, very deep into the rural landscape of the Verville map, back to the Gotthard region. This project is still far from being done and uh, today we are actually working on the main focal point this whole Gotthard build. It's the Wassen region. In a bit I'm gonna show you that uh, on Google Earth so you get a better idea of where exactly this is and uh, how it looks like in real life. As mentioned in the first uh, episode where we started this Gotthard project, we have now the base infrastructure and everything set in place already here. With the base infrastructure I, I meant the the railway lines, the water flows and the highways as well as a couple of roads here and there. And this also implies that the terrain around the region is also almost final. Of course uh, there's going to be some tweaks here and there, but uh, in general this whole area is now prepared for the detailing part and actually making it uh, look nice because as you could have seen from the shot before, right now it's still very very bland but um, as you can see now on the screen we are already in the middle of the detailing process uh, while i'm just building this other gallery or shed tunnel here to partially cover up the the highway a bit to um, protect it from rock falls and stuff i hope you noticed what i did before with the they are called the slope profiles I think yeah slope profiles uh, I used the grass version and uh, together with network multi-tool I could just draw a parallel network next to the river for which I also use the terraforming network and by placing those slopes to the left and right of the of the water stream I can also artificially narrow down the the whole water stream which is absolutely necessary because I mean, I uh, probably sound like a broken record, but in this game it's insanely hard, if not impossible, to have very narrow, tiny, little water streams. Basically, every stream you want to build turns out into a huge river with way too much water. Otherwise, um, if you narrow it down too much, the water will not flow gently, it will create huge waves and then droughts again and waves again and back and forth. It's, uh, it's really annoying. 
I think it has to do with the terrain resolution that's not uh, high enough. So the water gets all uh, checked up by the by the low terrain resolution. But yeah, as I said, um, in the second Gotthard episode, the one before the guest build, I also talked about the technique of narrowing down the, the water streams with water-friendly rock assets. That That's also working pretty damn good. But I just didn't feel like placing those rocks everywhere. I mean, I'm already quite extensively using them and uh, I thought we need um, a little bit of variety and uh, hence the slope networks. Unfortunately, they don't have exactly the same texture as the terrain surrounding them, so um, the, the transitions uh, from the slope profiles to the actual terrain needs to be covered up a little bit by, uh, by trees and uh, props, uh, rocks or whatever you can find, basically, whatever fits the, the area. But yeah, that for a hint, if you also want to build mountainous areas with um, more decent looking water streams. It's definitely not the, the perfect solution, but it's, uh, it's the best I could do here with uh, the tools for uh, my disposal. And here, while you can see me building this uh, little pedestrian path, it's, uh, it's getting more evident how insane the height differences are from place to place here. It's just, uh, once again, it's uh, it becomes evident how this game is really not meant for, um, for you to build uh, on, on such uh, steeply sloped uh, terrain. Especially with the terrain conforming networks, it's uh, sometimes super tricky when you try to squeeze in a, a narrow path here and there, or even even roads. I was very briefly starting there, uh, building on the road infrastructure for for the Vassen village. We're gonna come back to that in a bit. Uh, in the meantime, I just uh, switched back down to the uh, quote-unquote valley, and uh, here I'm building a little um, farm. Nothing too crazy, but very common for the area. And, and those little fences you can... not little fences, but the, the big fences on, on the right here. Uh, they're supposed to uh, prevent uh, rocks from uh, falling down um, on, the, on the rail infrastructure. Also a very common thing to see in the mountains. But um, yeah, I haven't found uh, the, the better suited asset for it. So I just used uh, those... Uh, what are those? Uh, I think football, European football uh, fences. Just in this instance, I uh, placed another network on top of the rail uh, tunnel there. This old stone looking tunnel, which I use for every single tunnel in this uh, Gotthard mountain railway. It fits absolutely perfectly. And for this water stream here, I went back to the <laughs> almost older technique with the uh, water friendly rocks. Uh, placed them along the shoreline to hide the very warped uh, cliff texture from the terrain itself a bit and uh, spiced everything up with some greenery. I think this time is uh, as good as any to uh, show some Google Earth shots. Here you can see the whole uh, Vassen region. Unfortunately, only the terrain is 3D, so uh, nothing of the rest. But as you can see, it's just a small generic, nothing too special uh, in terms of uh, the village. Wow, that was... <laughs> Very good English, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but uh, definitely you can see the crazy rail infrastructure we have everywhere. This is uh, yeah, a train uh, a train fanatic's dream, basically. So if you are into trains, I highly recommend you checking out the area. Unfortunately, these days there aren't too many trains running the, the old route. Most of them are rerouted um, through the Gotthard base tunnel. Um, but there's one special train, the Treno Cotardo it's called, it still uh, runs the old panoramic or scenic route uh, on a daily basis. And there's also um, some kind of hiking path along the, the rail infrastructure there. Um, I did that way back in the day when I was still a child, so I don't even know if it still exists. Probably it, it, it does, but... Uh, 
um, yeah, don't, uh, no, no guarantees. <laughs> All right, um, and right now we are um, trying to recreate uh, this village. I mean, recreate is a, is a big word for uh, me just trying to capture the vibe a little bit and uh, yeah, basically trying to do the best I can with the assets I have. And um, yeah, I think I also talked about that already. I I don't really have like Swiss Alpine um, buildings. That's just something that's uh, non-existent on the workshop. And I don't have, I really don't have the time and uh, yeah, or want to spend the effort of um, yeah, getting those perfectly suited assets. Um, but I think in the end it still uh, turn, turned out pretty nice. Of course we also need uh, a little gas station here and there. That's uh, that's very important. And in general I just went for a, a mixture between those... Uh, how are they called in English? In German it's Fachwerkhäuser uh, with the wooden panels and some other buildings that aren't uh, very distinctive for a, a certain place. And now for my almost favorite part in City Skylines, building a little train station. Um, I think this is actually the first time I built a truly rural train station. Um, so first I wasn't too sure about how to tackle this, um, but then I thought like uh, one platform should be enough and I'm gonna reroute the trains to um, yeah, to switch sides basically when they come from... I mean, we, we drive on the right side here in game, uh, which means that a game that's coming down from the Gotthard Pass uh, has to change sides and uh, yeah, basically dock at the, at the platform here. And as you can see, I shrank everything down a little bit. I didn't want to have like the, the normal sized 8 meters wide uh, platforms. I rather went for something smaller together with this uh, little rural station building which I spiced up quite heavily with those uh, planter pots and uh, later on I also changed the roof. Um, unfortunately I didn't record that, uh, that process but <clears throat> it looks pretty damn good in the end I have to say. I also used the texture uh, function from PO. I added a color rectangle to color <laughs> those little flowers a bit to have some more variety and it's it's just a, a nice little touch, isn't it? The funny thing is in real life this uh, station is also a teensy bit on the outskirts of, uh, of the village and uh, it was a pure coincidence that it happened that my station is also um, slightly further away at the edge of, of the village. But uh, yeah, I, I take it. Another pretty neat thing about building a small rural train station is that uh, it's, it's uh, a lot less area that you have to detail. So I just needed some industrial looking buildings for... I mean, I have no clue what, <laughs> what they are uh, doing there, but there, there was just the stuff laying around and uh, some uh, maintenance uh, equipment or whatever it was. Um, a little third rail for parking some some um, trailers and then just uh, the usual uh, detailing some fences here and there some benches and uh, lots of decals actually I placed down a lot of decals afterwards to uh, yeah um, give the impression that it's not that heavily used or well maintained anymore and yeah, all in all, it's just a very satisfying little build here because I could finish it in one go, which is <laughs> kind of rare uh, for a train station in, in my case, at least. I even did the signals already and also the, the gantries and uh, everything. So we are actually soon ready for a POV ride, which is super exciting. For the opposite part, I mean, right now we are building in the upper to third area I would say and the last third would be the Göschenen village with a little train station as well and the entrance to the Gotthard um, tunnel 
and uh, a little teaser, I outsourced this build to, to a guest builder, another one, yes, <laughs> quite, uh, quite a few guest builder in uh, those 10 episodes of Verville, right? Super excited for it. It's, uh, it's kind of an underdog, but uh, I really love the stuff he's doing. Um, he's also building a lot of Swiss uh, stuff, he's Swiss himself, so he's kind of familiar with the area and everything, so I, I uh, don't know how, how it looks like these days, because I haven't seen it yet, so yeah, as, I'm probably as excited as you are. And look at that, together with some trees, the whole area is really coming together. It already looks like something and uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely something very distinctive. I, I haven't seen anything like it uh, before in City Skylines, so I hope you enjoy it too. The next episode is probably going to be something in the city again, because I don't want to... Um, bore you maybe too much with this uh, rural uh, detailing stuff. I mean, yeah, the, the series is called Verville and Verville is the city, but uh, <laughs> I really like the variety, not gonna lie. It's, uh, it's really about uh, switching forth and back between those different places and that's probably also the reason why I'm still not, not burned out by this series, not at all. It's, uh, <laughs> it's still super fun to build in it and this is probably a good time to uh, talk a little bit about my um, Twitch channel, where I, where I basically stream everything that I build in in Verville. It's uh, these days it's really like uh, when I open the game and I have some time to spare to to build in Verville. I also open up uh, Twitch and stream the stuff for for the guys that are interested in that. So yeah, if you want to get a bit more in depth into Verville and everything. I highly recommend you to check uh, to check out my Twitch channel. It's all linked down in the video description. And um, as you've seen by now, I also upload uh, the past uh, live streams to YouTube as well. So yeah, it's totally up to you what you want to do with that. Just want to give you some options. Once again here you can see the insane terrain differences. Um, it, this was particularly tricky here to uh, hide it a little bit. Uh, yeah, everything is so close to each other and the terrain texture is being warped like crazy. So uh, I had to place some more rocks over them and uh, spice it up with more trees. It's <laughs> Rinse and repeat, always the same basically, but it works and it looks good, so yeah. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I think this is the last part for today's episode, um, detailing a bit around this very iconic little uh, church or chapelle. I used the, um, how are they called? The dock walls or something like that, they look very rustic and fit the area perfectly, surrounded the whole uh, church uh, with them, placed some artificial terrain with the ploppable uh, grass uh, in there, make this little railing as you can see me do right now, then I'm gonna place uh, a little graveyard as well and, and some trees and uh, just some pedestrian path and yeah that's that's uh, that's about that the rest you can see in the cinematics that are coming up uh, shortly and somehow i feel like this was a very short episode but it's uh it's actually the same length as usual so yeah uh, at this point i usually start talking about uh, my uh, my social media of course um definitely follow me on instagram where I upload photorealistic screenshots of, of my projects. There you can observe all the glorious details we hid everywhere throughout uh, this uh, city project. I think I'm not gonna mention Facebook anymore because Facebook is kind of dead for me. Uh, I really don't care about that anymore. But definitely pay a visit on my Discord server. 
we have some really cool people there. It's very nice chatting with all of you over there and also see what you guys come up with. And a very big shout out to all my patrons that have been supporting me for many months at this point. Connor, Renee, Toby, Dominic, Molovo, Rake and Sebastian. Thank you guys so much for, for your support. It's greatly appreciated and definitely also each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great one and uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you.